welcome to the channel. Hope you're having an awesome day. Today we're going to start out the vlog. Oh my goodness, the camera is tilting. Um, we are going to start the channel a little bit differently. I am in the room where I slept. I'm just tidying up, uh, checking out, and um, I'll get back with you in the car when we talk about the Focus ST's fueling. something a little bit different you know it's normally I just have the cool music with shots of me driving around the city but yeah I thought I'd just from a place where I was staying I just thought I'd you know show you how I you know book out and check out and get ready and do my thing um, so yeah today I quickly want to talk to you about the Focus ST's fueling and I want to talk to you about why the car has pretty bad fuel economy uh, it's not the worst but it is bad compared to traffic because I mean, honestly, a Golf GTI is much more fuel efficient. But then again, it has it has less power. Um, so yeah, I just want to quickly talk to you about that and explain that to you. Now, um, first of all, the car has it's a it's a boosted car. It's a turbocharged car. Has a very small KO3 turbo, uh, which boosts about 1.6 bar. 1.6 bar is pretty pretty high. It's a it's a high about a high boost pressure uh, the two import, more important sensors are the map sensor the manifold absolute pressure sensor and the tip sensor which is the throttle inlet pressure sensor so it's both of them sit in the intake manifold one is where the throttle inlet pressure tip sensor is closer to the throttle body and then you also have your map sensor now based on the pressure and the temperature of the air going into the engine it actually determines the volume of air right goes back that goes into the into this into the cylinders or when air goes into the the engine you need to add fuel and the way that fuel is delivered is through a direct injection system uh, remember this car is a two liter four banger just keep that in mind so it's got four injectors and then fuel is directly injected into the cylinder by the direct injection port or direct injectors I know I'm not a mechanic, don't quote me. But yeah, so so that's how the car delivers fuel. Uh, the fuel comes from the tank in two pumps. We have a low pressure fuel pump, uh, which sits in the tank. Um, that guy, it's pressure working, operating pressure is about eight bar. And then you have a high pressure fuel pump, which sits behind the, um, the intake basically the intake tube um, that one runs about 150 bars so that's a fuck ton of psi so that's how it you know pulls up pressure into the fuel uh into the fuel lines and then when the car uh primes the injector it then injects a very precise amount in a very small amount of time usually a few milliseconds closes up and then you've got all the fuel you need what you have to realize is when you drive normally right the car is running on vacuum so that means it's not building boost it's just sucking air into it and then when it's running on vacuum the air fuel ratio is trying you know the car tries to keep the air fuel ratio at about 14.7 um that is that is what we need so that's the ideal uh air fuel ratio which is 14.7 parts air to one part fuel so the car manages that brilliantly i have to admit um i've seen some some data logs where people are not uh, boosting but just driving gradually and it normally ranges from about 14.55 to about 14.85 it maintains it brilliantly when you're not in boost when you start boosting the car has to add more fuel to compensate for the extra amount of air that comes into the engine 
perfect. When you drive a booster car, your air fuel ratio does get richer. That means more fuel is added and that kind of keeps the temperatures in check because the excess fuel adds as a coolant and protects your engine and it also prevents knock. It actually adds more fuel and the excess fuel it adds because of the high boost pressure is kind of what hurts your pocket, damages your fuel economy. Um, the Focus ST is a fun car when you get into boost, uh, when you do get into it a lot you will suffer. But I quickly want to show you the fueling strategies that the car uses <clears throat> and uh, just explain that to you in a little bit more detail. When it comes to air fuel ratios, the car has a, a magnificent wide band. Um, when I say wide band, I mean uh, O2 sensor. So it's got a brilliant wide band um, that really, really controls your AFRs. Amazingly, very precise, very accurate. Um, so yeah, so let's get into that closed loop which is basically this uh the desired fueling target when scavenging this is the target that you normally want this is 14.7 right this is 14.7 you can see that um it's actually it's actually ideal this is what you want right so when this is the desired fuel target when you're not boosting it's 14.7 now i want to show you the tables when you actually go into power demand fueling. Power demand fueling is the fueling strategy when you are in boost. So this means the car, when you're demanding power, the car will then add more fueling and um, to give you what you want. Um, okay, desired lambda. So this is it. So basically, if you look at where you're getting into boost, let's say from about 2,500 to about 3,000, you can see it drops dramatically from that 14.7 to about a 12.5, 12.2 right so remember it also changes the more fueling the more fuel is added when the coolant temperature goes up so remember um there's a lot of sensors that work in tandem with each other in order to try to get this car sorted now for this stage two tune um that i've been working on um you can see about 5000 rpm it it falls down to about 11.6 um this is where i where i where you get where i feel you get the least amount of knock uh, so that's a shit ton of fuel um yeah and basically all of this is determined by your um, is calculated by your your wide band your upstream wide band in the in the downpipe so yeah so this is basically what you what you get um obviously you can add a little bit more power by leaning out but you're gonna increase the amount of knock, and um, if you have shitty fuel like we have in Namibia, you definitely don't want you don't want that. That's it, guys. Um, I just really want to show you that. So that's basically how or why the Focus ST is pretty. It's not the most fuel efficient car you could possibly find, but it's one of the greatest. So in all things, oh my god, I left this one open. So that's how the fueling strategy works. Um, if you do drive this car. Change early because there's a shift light indicator on your on your tachometer. So change early if you do daily this car. Um, I I bought a second car which came out which came out cheaper than dailying this. So yeah, I just bought a second car, um, a second hand, you know, run of the mill Kia. Remember, if you do tune this car, you are adding more fuel in, so your fuel economy is going to drop a little bit we're not gonna nose dive you can add a lot you can extract a lot of power from this engine but remember the fuel remember the fuel and now with Greenpeace and we have to say fuel and tax we've been taxed on everything yeah but me that's a that's a story for another day uh, if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up please smash that subscribe button it is in the bottom right hand corner of the screen move your mouse pointer over it smash it and thank you so much for watching Please like this video, um, share it with fellow SD owners. Um, hopefully they'll find it interesting as well. And thank you guys, I really appreciate it. Take care, see you later, bye for now.